chapter 23. The, the hunters left many wounded otter behind them. Some floated in and died on the shore. Others I killed with my spear since they were suffering and could not live. But I found a young otter that was not badly hurt. It lay in a bed of bull kelp, and I would have paddled by if Ronto had not embarked. A strand of kelp was wound around its body, and I thought it was sleeping. For often before they go to sleep, they anchor themselves in this way to keep them from drifting off. Then I saw there was a deep gash across its back. The otter did not try to swim away as I drew near and reached over the side of the canoe. They have a large eyes, especially when they're young. This ones were so large from fear and pain that I could not, could see my reflection in them. I cut the kelp that held it and took it into the tide pool behind the reef, which was sheltered from the waves. The day was calm after the storm, and I caught two fish along the reef. I was careful to keep them alive, because otter will not eat anything that is dead. I left them in the pool. This was early in the morning. That afternoon, I went back to the pool. The fish had disappeared. The young otter was asleep, floating on its back. I did not try to treat its wound with herbs, because salt water heals, and the herbs would have washed off anyway. I brought two fish every day and left them in the pool. The otter would not eat them while I was watching. Then I brought four fish, and they also disappeared, and finally six, which seemed to be the right number. I brought them whether the day was calm or stormy. The otter grew, and its wound began to heal, but still it stayed in the pool. Now when I came, it would be waiting for me and would take the fish from my hand. The pool was not big and could have easily... It could have easily gotten out and, uh, and into the sea, yet it stayed there and slept and waited for me to come with food. The young otter now was the length of my arm, very glossy, had a long nose, and that came to a point and many whiskers on each side, and, it's, and the largest size I've ever seen. They would watch me all the time. I was at the pond following me wherever I did. And when I was said something, move around in a very funny way, in a way, too, that made the pain come to my throat because they were gray and sad also. For a long time I called it otter, as I called Rantu, dog. Then I decided to give the otter a name. The name was Munani, which means little boy with large eyes. It was a hard task catching fish every day, especially if the wind was blowing and the waves were high. Once when I could catch only two and drop them into the pool, Munani ate them quickly and waited for more. When he found this was all I had, he swam around in circles looking at me reproachfully. The waves were so high the next day that I could not fish on the reef, even on low tide, and since I had nothing to give him, I did not go to the pool. It was three days before I could fit, catch fish, and I went there again. The pool was deserted. I knew that he would have leave someday, but I felt bad that he had gone back to the sea and I'd never catch fish for him again, nor would I know him. If I saw him again in the kelp, for now he had grown and his wound had healed and he looked like all the others. Soon after Alutz had left, I moved back to the headland. Nothing had been harmed except the fence, which I mended. In a few days, the house was the same before. The only thing that worried me 
was that all the abalones I had gathered in the summer were gone. I would need to live from day to day on what I could catch, trying to get enough. On the days when I could fish, to last through the times when I could not. Through the first part of the winter before Bonami swam away, this was sometimes hard to do. Afterward, it was not so hard, and Rantu and I had enough to eat. When Aleuts were on the island, I had no chance to catch little smelts and dry them, so the nights that the winter were dark, I went to bed early and worked only during the day. But I still had another string for my fishing spear, many hooks of abalone shell, and last of all, earrings to match the necklace Tutu had given me. They took a long time for I searched the beach many mornings when the tide was left out before I found two pebbles of the same color as the stones of the necklace and the soft enough to cut. The holes in the earrings took even more time the stones were hard to hold when I had done them and rubbed them bright in fine sand and water, fastened them with the bone hooks to fit my ears. They were very pretty. On sunny days, I would wear them with my cormorant dress and necklace and walk to the cliff with Rantu. The thought of Tatuk, but in the days I especially would look off to the north and wish that she were here to see me, I could hear the talking strange language I make up things to say to her, things for her to say to me.